Hey, what's up, YouTube? I wanted to show everybody my home aquarium aquaponics chop system. Uh, I haven't seen anything like this on YouTube yet. Mostly because it involves taking up quite a bit of space in your room, whichever room you're going to put it in. Plus, um, the system is complex compared to a regular flood and drain system. And I'll show you how this all works. Here I've got a 29 gallon fish tank. Uh, it's got a few fish in here, nothing really special. Uh, I just need the fish to eat the food and pee and poop in the water. And um, that of course is the fertilizer that gets pumped over into my grow bed. Here I've got some geraniums and some peppers. Uh, geraniums are not doing so well. They're getting too much water, so I'm going to have to start looking for a better plant uh, to put in this system. Um, basically, I'll show you the um, uh, the circuit that the way that this thing works. Uh, with the chop system, the chop stands for constant height one pump. So the fish tank is always at this height. At least I try to keep it there. Um, but I have to valve it down from the siphon um, that takes the water out of here. Over here I've got a couple of valves. I've got a valve right here that controls the siphon, which is lift through the tank. I think you might be able to see it right there. And that's only down a couple of inches in case uh, the pump ever shut off uh, with a power outage. Um, the siphon won't empty the entire fish tank, so I only have it a couple of inches down. What happens is, uh, under pressure or suction, however it works, uh, the siphon siphons water out of the fish tank. And here I have it. You can see it's just peeing out of this little two uh, or half inch pipe. Um, and that fills up the grow bed. The grow bed will fill up until um, this siphon, uh, which is a, called a T siphon, um, will siphon the water all the way down to the very bottom of this grow bed, which is probably about, it's probably got about four or five inches of rock in there. I had to check the rock to make sure that it was uh, compatible um, with the fish because if you get a limestone, um, it'll give it a really high uh, acidic value and you, it, it won't work. You have to do all kinds of chemical upgrades in order to make the, uh, in order to make the, the system work. So I'll pull this out just to show you. So this is the siphon. It's just, uh, um, I believe it's three quarter inch pipe. And I drilled some holes in the bottom of this cap um, and the way it works is when the water uh, after it's drained out it'll start to build again and as it builds uh, it gets above uh, the little holes that are drilled in the side and in the bottom it actually blocks off um, an air chamber inside of the siphon and as the water rises the air is continually forced to come down this middle standpipe here in the center. You can see it way down here. I have this container that I cut the bottom off and put it in here to keep the rocks away from the siphon because otherwise it's a real pain in the ass when uh, you need to get to the siphon. You always have to dig out the rocks. And it, it just got to the point where I said, screw this, I'm going to find something that fits it correctly. So um, it's working really well right now. So what I'll do is uh, put this baby back in here and once she gets up to the top of the siphon it will all be forced uh, through, I, I believe it's through atmospheric pressure, forces it down and underneath. And what I have down here is I have the end of the standpipe which came down, let's see if I can get a little lower. So it comes down from above, it goes through a little um, a couple elbows and then it comes out uh, right here and when this thing fully siphons it rockets out of that tube. It actually splatters on the uh, on the back side 
of uh, my sump tank. So this is the sump tank. It's got a pump in there. Uh, it's a real small pump. I should have went with a little bit bigger pump. I think this one is 12 gallons per minute, something like that. It's, it's really slow. I should have went with a bigger pump. Uh, but it was affordable. So this is the first try at this system. So I had to I had to custom make this cabinet, and I'm not a carpenter. Um, but I knew what I wanted. I had the sizes. There goes the, the slice, and it's starting to come out now. In a few minutes, that thing will be rocketing out of there. Um, so the cabinet is is custom made to hold the grow bed, uh, which was actually it's made out of fiberglass. It's a fiberglass tub, and it was actually too wide. It would have taken up a lot of room in my uh, in my my living room here. And what I had to do is I had to cut it in half, and then I had to uh, fix the seam back together with a fiberglass uh, patch. And I was surprised that it actually held. Um, just because when you cut something like a tub in half and then you expect it to hold all this weight with all this rock in here there's got to be four or five bags of rock plus all the water too and then plants and everything else that starts to add up to a lot of weight but it's held, it's done good so uh, continuing on with the way this goes so the siphon draws water out of the fish tank it comes down uh, through this little pipe and it pees out into the water. Um, the water fills up uh, in the grow bed and then the siphon, the tea siphon that's in here will uh, force it down into the sump tank and then the sump tank will eventually, it'll, the pump in there will pump it back up through another tube up to uh, the top of the fish tank and what I've got in here is this helps to aerate it. If I can take some of this apart I can show you. So right now there's a, a filter uh, that runs 24-7 that helps to aerate the water uh, and it also cleans the water as well. Um, luckily it doesn't clean all of the um, fertilizer that I need out of it for the plants. Then we've got a half inch pipe um, that I drill holes in that also when the pump pumps it into the tank it also helps to aerate. So we've got two different systems running to aerate the water for the fish and it's been running now for more than two months like this and the, the water is almost crystal clear. I mean you can see that the plants, I don't have that many plants but look at how clean the water is. I have not changed this water in two months and the fish love it. Uh, they're doing great. They look very healthy. So, let's put this cover back on. There are some problems with this system. Um, what I'm working on right now is um, uh, finding a, a float switch that when the water from the pump um, gets too high, say the siphon uh, that feeds the grow bed right here, somehow becomes plugged or somebody fiddles with it and uh, or one of the valves and it shuts off what will happen is the pump uh, will keep running and it will fill up the fish tank and it will overflow and we had that problem once and it will overflow right onto the floor and then you know it will ruin your whole it will ruin your whole room so I got the idea of this tub right here I got it at Walmart and it's just perfect size. It had little wheels on it and uh, we took the wheels off and the cover off and the fish tank fit right in the middle of it. I got so excited when we saw that. Um, so what I did was I put a bulkhead fitting on it over here so just in case the uh, the fish tank does overflow um, the water will collect in the tub and then it just drain out through this bulkhead fitting and just drain right back into the grow bed. So then eventually it'll fill up the grow bed and the tea siphon will siphon it, down, siphon it all down into the pump. Or to the sump, I mean. So uh, it looks a little weird with a fish tank sitting in a tub like this, but it is very safe now. Uh, I used to worry all the time I'd go to work and I would have to shut off the, uh, the aquaponics system because I was just worried about it overflowing. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to 
mark out and cut down along the edge um, make it a little bit so you can see the fish tank a little more I mean it doesn't have to be this high it could be down a couple of inches at least so and you have to have it on a heavy duty stand too I mean this fish tank uh, has 29 gallons of water in it and if you figure that out it weighs about 250 260 pounds and I originally had it on a cheesy little metal stand that it came with when it was new but it was so narrow and so top heavy because the fish tank has to be higher than the grow bed in order for the siphon to work. I mean, you can't have the fish tank down below. Um, that uh, I was worried about my dog roughhousing with me and then bumping into it and tipping the entire thing over. So uh, I had this stand professionally made. I mean, it fits right here. It was made to fit this fish tank. Very sturdy. Uh, I came up with the design, and the guy uh, who made it did a really good job on it. But um, that's pretty much the system. Uh, I'd be willing to uh, accept advice from people on how to keep it from overflowing right now. Like I said, I'm working on getting um, uh, an aquarium uh, float switch, which so if the if the water level gets too high and it, it's almost ready to overflow, the float switch will trip and then it'll shut off the pump. At least I gotta try and figure out how to wire it up like that. Um, and then at the same time, uh, if the water gets too low because, say, the pump shut off for some other reason, like it was unplugged, um, that uh, the siphon wouldn't siphon out all the water and then siphon would just uh, break. And that's we definitely don't want that. You don't want your siphon to break the the one coming from the fish tank. So this system has two siphons in it. It has a T siphon over here. It has a regular siphon like uh, this. This came out of my home brew beer kit. Um, if you're familiar with the bucket system of uh, brewing beer, Let's see if I can put this over. You can see it. The uh, that siphon tube and hose came out of my homebrew beer kit so I got another one so it just siphons uh, fish water down into the grow bed it's a really good system it does work another thing is that this tea siphon here if you go on uh, Google or uh, YouTube and look up a tea siphon you'll find this instead of I would recommend using this instead of a, a regular bell siphon because those bell siphons suck I must have tried something like three or four of those bell siphons, and they uh, every time I come up with a design, there's always something screwy with it. The thing never worked, and uh, I had uh, flood problems all the time in this grow bed because of the bell siphon. Um, then I went on YouTube and I found uh, this uh, fella. I'll try and put a, a link to his his video uh, from New York State that came up with this idea for a double T siphon and uh, he had the right idea because this system doesn't put out uh, a lot of um, it, it's not a high pressure system I mean you can see that this is all that I got for water coming out and it's, it fills up really slow and what that means is that uh, the siphon doesn't have a lot of um, water to fill up quickly like most siphons need they, they kind of need that pressure uh, to force them to work um, but this one uh, it works pretty well with just a, a low pressure or low volume of water going into it and it, it will work it works good so with a custom made cabinet on this side for the grow bed and a custom made cabinet over here to support the weight um, of the fish tank the whole system does work it works great uh, I just worry about it overflowing because, like I said, there's problems. If the power goes out, the um, what will happen is the pump down in the sump down here will stop pumping. And the siphon that siphons water out of the fish tank into the grow bed will continue to run. And what will happen is it will run until it sucks air. It will run down the water. That's why it's only two inches down because if I had the siphon all the way to the bottom it would suck every drop out of this tank until the power came back on for the pump 
So now that it's broke uh, because there's no power to the pump, all of a sudden the power comes back on, the pump starts back up, and it starts to pump water into the tank. So now that there's no siphon to help get the water out of there, the pump will overflow the tank, and the tank would overflow water all over the floor. And uh, yeah, that would ruin your day. Especially if you got neighbors downstairs, they probably wouldn't like you very much. So um, that's the reason for this tub that I got, a tote, whatever you call it, um, to, for the fish tank to sit in. It's just a, a security measure is all it is. I just don't want any floods, and this helps to alleviate that. So uh, the scenario could also work the other way, where if the siphon uh, somehow breaks, the same thing will happen. The pump will just flood uh, the grow bed, and I mean the, the the fish tank, and next thing you know, you're out there with a mop. So the chop system does work pretty good. You have to think ahead. You have to try and consider uh, what are all the problems. Um, so far, the plants have been really growing great. Um, I've already picked the peppers off, so I don't know how much longer that these plants will grow. They probably won't grow for much longer, but I had to close the shade because this is their south-facing window and it gets really sunny um, to shoot this video. But uh, I would be welcome to suggestions on what kind of plants to put in this uh, with the grow media. Uh, I'm thinking of strawberries, but now it's in. we're in late fall now. We're getting ready for winter, and um, even though this is our sunniest window, I'm still going to have a lot less uh, sunlight. So. Any suggestions about what plants would do good in this system, I would appreciate it. So that's it, my aquarium aquaponic chop system. Uh, please like and share the video. Uh, I'm open to suggestions, uh, and uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Take care.